was a cloudy Wednesday afternoon when the strange happenings began. Happening. The office of Detective Agency 415. This was when the call came in. A call that something fishy was going on around the office. Joey, what are you doing? I'm doing the inner monologue that happens at the beginning of every investigation. Okay, but we're about to... Wait, you're doing the inner monologue? Yes. Uh, but it's my turn, though. I'm supposed to do the inner monologue. Well, you weren't here yet, so I just thought I could do it now, and then I... once you were here, we could get started with the investigation. It's, it's my turn, though. You know I was looking forward to this. Well, do you want to just pick up where I left off? Where'd you stop? Something fishy was going on around the office. That's almost all of it. Well, what do you want to do? Well, um, I want to do the inner monologue like a good investigator would do. Okay, why don't we just take it from the top and you do the inner monologue like you were supposed to? Okay, good, good. So, uh, you gonna start? I already did. But you're not saying anything. Because, I mean, it's an inner monologue. You're, it's supposed to be in the head, you know? But then no one will be able to hear you, Evan. So what do you want me to do? Do an inner monologue, like an outer monologue, but pretend it's an inner monologue when it's actually an outer monologue? Stop saying monologue! I'm trying, Joey! I'm sorry I lost my temper. I'm sorry, too. I was just really... Looking forward to this. Yeah, honestly, I shouldn't have stolen it from you. It was your turn. But, I mean, maybe we should just skip the title or something and skip no, the intermodal. No, no, no. You wanted to do this. You should do it. Ah, um, I actually forgot what I was supposed to say, so. Right. Well, then let's just skip to the yeah, intro. Yeah, come on. Let's just, come on. Let's just skip the intro. Let's go. Joey, do you smell that? Oh, yeah, Evan, it smells awful. No, it smells like someone just decided to cook their fish lunch in the <laughs> office and only for it to, to lead to an investigation where we figure out who it is. With segments revolving around a central theme that would never actually lead to any clues, but because of plot convenience, actually do. Yeah, and will eventually lead to a person, and basically we could have realized we could have figured it out with basic communication skills. Evan. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? That this situation we just described is exactly what's going to happen? Yep. Now let's get to the suspects. Do we, uh, do we, do we have any suspects? Well, there's Frank and Sarah, but Frank's with his files and Sarah's on the scene, so they both have perfect alibis. Too perfect? Just perfect enough. <clears throat> okay, well, let's, let's not start with suspects. Let's... Let's figure out a, a motive, a motive for the assault in our noses. All of the construction. What? Yeah, think about it. Whoever brought the fish must have gotten stuck in a traffic jam because of all the campus construction, and then their fish must have gotten cold. Okay, so, oh, so they would, they would have to go and heat it up. Exactly, and where would a perfect place be to heat up a cold lunch? The, the office, office microwave. microwave. Yes. Yeah. My God, okay, now we know where this exactly really needs to go, this investigation needs to go. Exactly. Yeah, so, I mean. At the scene of all uh, of the campus construction. Yeah, no, 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 somewhere, yeah, no, yeah, exactly, exactly that, yes, yes. I'm gonna go call Sarah on the scene. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll figure, you know what, I'm gonna figure something out. You do that. Yeah. Hello, Sarah. 
Hello? It's Joey. We need you to do some investigating out on the scene. Cool. I'm on it. I am Sarah Hernandez, and this is Sarah on the Scene. Sarah on the scene, and I am here with... John. John. So do you know what's going on with construction on campus? Uh, not too much. I just know that they took down some of the old student housing. No. I know that it's impossible for me to find parking, <laughs> and that it pisses me off because they have the whole thing coned off, <laughs> and nobody's parking there except for, like, two cars. I think they're building a new building for, I think, the English department or something like that, right? I heard that they're building a new Becca building. I don't know what... Becca is. So the school is in the process of building a brand new creative arts facility as well as new student housing. Do you think that's a good idea? What are your opinions about that? Uh, I think it's a great idea. We definitely need more student housing, uh, something more affordable for the students. I'm also the program director at KSFS and I think that is definitely needed because our studio is kind of old. Yeah, I mean a lot of the a lot of the buildings are pretty old and it seems like the insides have been around since like the 70s or something like that. So. I think it's great that there's housing that's going to be added just because the whole selection process is very difficult and I know people that lived in their cars for the first month of school because they didn't have housing or they were on the wait list so I think it will be beneficial. We definitely need to have more resources on campus especially housing because I was on the housing wait list until it ended this last fall semester. If you had the opportunity to do any construction here on campus yourself what would you do? I would add more parking, definitely. <laughs> I thought that that's what they were adding, a parking structure, but they're not. <laughs> it really is necessary because parking here is crazy. Well, I guess I'd take care of the arts department since our school isn't really an athletic school. Yeah. Uh, I'd make sure the arts and people are passionate, but I'd also build a better housing and parking structure. Yeah. All sounds like good ideas. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Christina 2020. Talking to students about the construction was all super interesting and informative. I think I got some really good intel. I'll have to let Joey and Evan know ASAP. Interesting. Very interesting. Oh, ah, uh, break time. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Remember that to love America is to love all Americans. Because love has no labels. Touchdown! Oh, wow. Did you see that? Whoa, 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 we scored? Yeah, we scored. We're going to the playoffs. I can't believe I missed that. Every time I'm buzzed, I spend too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face filters. Okay, you know what? what? Yep, that's mine. I'm gonna need that back. No. Nope. Kevin! We have a gun. Why do you ask that, kiddo? You know, Evan, I just don't think we're gonna get anywhere if we just focus here on campus. No, yeah, you're right. Like, we can't just figure out anything here on campus. We, and do we even have the budget to even go off campus? Perhaps I could be of assistance to that. Frank, what are you doing here? Well, I thought that maybe my files might be able to help with our investigation. Okay, but you can't just interrupt us like that. Yeah, you have to wait for us to call you first. Mm -hmm. but why? Because that's just how it works, Frank. Well, wait, so you just want me to stand over there and wait for you guys to call for me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you're getting it. This is ridiculous. 
Not as ridiculous as just interrupting the conversation, Frank. So as you were saying. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we have the budget. All right, now it would be a good time to look into Frank's files. Now you can start. I cannot believe those two sometimes. Anyway, let's see what we have in here. Now, according to my sources, the state of California is currently trying to construct a high-speed rail system or bullet train. This train would connect the cities of San Francisco and Los Angeles with a set of rails 800 miles long. And it is said that this train would be able to move up to 220 miles an hour, making the total trip from one city to another less than three hours. However, it is also estimated that the $77 billion high-speed rail won't open until the year 2029. That could relate to the investigation. Some of my own snooping has let me figure out that, that, that the San Francisco Transbay Terminal is currently closed due to cracks in the support beams. The terminal closed back in September of 2018, and currently there is no specific date for the reopening. But my sources here say that it is slated to reopen soon. A lot of things cause traffic in the city. Mm, who knew? It seems as though that San Francisco is getting some new detectives around the city. Uh, Miracle Messages is a group of people who go around and work to reunite homeless people with their loved ones. Founded by a one Mr. Adler approximately four years ago, Miracle Messages has been responsible for around 194 reunions, and allegedly that number is still growing. Joey, this is making us look bad. I know, should we stop him? Yes, um, you're, do you're done, Frank. But, but I have more files here. Well, we need to move on. To questioning the one and only Jeff Jacoby about the construction of the new Creative Arts Building. Yeah, that. Oh my god, wait, is, is that the time? Is that the time right now? Yeah, just about. Okay, okay. Um, I, have to, um, I have to go to a show. Um, hold on, um, I'll catch you later. Evan, where are you going? <laughs> Bye. All right, it's okay. Just don't panic. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, I'm, they're just, I, I'm being pursued. You're being pursued? Yes. By who? Students. Students? Yes. What do you mean by that? Well, I do things I'm not supposed to do, and so they're after me, and so I'm, I'm incognito. If you wouldn't mind just taking off your disguise, so oh, I, I I'm an I'm investigator, sorry. so I'm no. going to need to see who you actually are beneath Refer to that me mask. as Professor Nose. Professor Nose. I, I don't know Professor Nose. Yes, I have a new class. Uh, it's going to be uh, the social aspects of what Becca smells like, and so we're going we're gonna to examine uh, what students like to smell, but also what students smell like. Okay, well you've come to the perfect place because we're investigating a, a fish smell right now, so. All right, tell you what, you want me to, you don't want this? Honestly, I would love to All see right. who's beneath the mask. Fine, excuse me folks, I'll, I'll, wherever, I'll be right back. All right, well, I wonder who that was. That was really weird, but hopefully the good old Jeff Jacoby comes in soon. Hey, is this uh, office uh, for 415? 415. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Jeff, here you yeah, are. Hi. Some weird guy just came in right I know, before you. I, I have I, no idea who that I, was. It's yeah. okay. We got but I'm so glad you're here and that that glad weirdo didn't didn't give you any problems outside. Hello. So, so yeah. I do want to get this on tape. Is it okay that I record what you have to say? Does anybody actually use tape anymore? We do here in the okay. office of 415. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. So, you yeah. uh, first off, I'm gonna get your name. With a calculator. No, no, no. This is a recorder. Okay, good. Sorry. So, oh, could you name. state your name? Yes, uh, I am uh, Jeff Jacoby. Jeff Jacoby, mm -hmm. and what is your relation to the Becca Department and San Francisco State? Uh, poor and excellent. No, actually, I'm a professor in the Becca Department. I teach, uh, along with classes about smelly students, I teach audio, radio, and production management. 
Absolutely, that sounds really, really interesting. Well, as a Becca professor, I'm sure you know that there's a lot of construction going on surrounding the new Creative Arts Building. Oh, yeah, have you all been uh, privy to, in the, middle of, in the middle of your class, has the building started to shake? Just a, a little bit, yeah. yeah. Well, a couple earthquakes here and there, you know. Yeah, that's the new construction right next door on Tapia um, Avenue or Boulevard, whatever it is. Right, right. So, do you know why we're getting this new Creative Arts Building? Well, yeah. Can can you uh, can you bleep out bad words? Uh, we'll do what we can. All right. So uh, you're getting a new building because you are currently working in a blank hole, and it was time. This building was built in 1956, I think. It's a long time. And it's falling down. We need a new building. So yeah, that's why crumbling. we're getting the new Becca Building, which you're never allowed to call the Becca Building. Oh, why, why wouldn't we be able to call it that? Because then the rest of the university gets jealous and the dean gets yelled oh, at. Oh, oh, so that's why we call it the Creative Arts all, Building. We all know it's the Becca Building. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So what types of equipment and tools do you think that students would be able to expect to find? Well, we don't know because it's still two to three years away. It's uh, a long time. The official timeline is two years. Uh, we'll see. What would so, you hope to see? Well, I, what I would hope to see is state-of-the-art gear that's state-of-the-art in two years. Because in this business, in the media arts business, in show business, equipment changes dramatically year to year. And so to buy equipment now or choose equipment now for a building that's two to three years away is silly. Absolutely. So we should wait a couple of years and then purchase state-of-the-art stuff. I, we are being assured that we will have the budget to buy the best available when the building is ready to open. That's super, super cool. I'm sure as an audio professor, you're hoping there's going to be all sorts of audio boards and things like that. Well, we know the direction. We, we know that things are going to the cloud. Uh, many of you would say that's already happened, which and certainly in my case, I'm in the cloud. <laughs> uh, but we know that uh, networking is one of the primary things that we are seeing happening, that you're able to communicate fairly long distances with very complex mixes, video, audio, and so on. And so we think that the interconnectivity of the new building will be of paramount importance. And I think that's what we're going to see. Studio One or the new television studio will be able to be broadcast in every other studio. The radio station will be able to be connected to any audio studio so we can do live performances. And every studio and every student will be able to talk to each other no matter where they are in the building, which is Absolutely. Pretty cool. That would be super, super great for yeah. students trying to collaborate on projects in different classes and exactly. I think that that would just really really move things forward into the future. I agree. Um, so how long um, do you think once the building is constructed that all of this will be able to kind of get going? Oh we're back to bad words. I, I would say that there I am being told we are being told that the building will be open in two years meaning fall of so would that mean like fully tech, everything ready for classes? That's what they're saying. Oh, OK. Uh, my guess is, from both experience and professional sensibility, is that they'll open the building in a couple of years, and it'll take two years at minimum before things work properly. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. It's also normal. I mean, the truth is, what works properly in this building? Other than us. Uh, you know, th this recorder right, right here. That, that recorder is working beautifully. Um, so Becca students are really good at improvisation and figuring things out on the fly. I think we're going to have to do that in the new building for a while, too. Yes, absolutely. Uh, before things settle down and we figure out what wire goes to what hole in the wall. <laughs> yeah. All of these answers have been super, super helpful. I honestly think I have everything I need to continue right on. on in my investigation. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Like my recorder off. All right, now just what to do with all of this information. Awkward. I'm the awkward silence. You try to avoid me, then there I am again. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. Like Kelly here is about to demonstrate. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Observe a domesticated human family in their natural habitat, known to their species as the backyard. Oh, you think I should light it now? I think it's good. Yeah. Oh dear, someone is about to burn a pile of debris that's too tall, which can start a wildfire. Wait. 
could it be? Blimey, oh, it is. It's Smokey. It's Smokey Bear. What a legend. What's the hey, it's here? Smokey. Sorry, it was too high. Right. Watch as he astutely ensures that there's no wind and how he removes some of the debris to create a smaller, safer burning pile. No, you, can't make, it no, you can't make it bigger, baby. The bigger, the better. Take note right. of our fearless furry friend here, yeah. humans. I appreciate it. Chris Bump. <laughs> Watching you. Smokey's done it again. Bye, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um. So yeah. No. I'm. I'm going to a show. Yeah. No. I told you about this. No. Okay. No. I'm going to see. Uh. Nelson. Nelson Samo. Have you heard of him or? Okay, okay, please stop yelling. We can talk about this tomorrow. Okay, hold on. The show's about to start. Hold on. Oh, hey, guys. Oh, thanks. I didn't make any jokes. I would not clap already. I, you don't know if I'm funny yet. Just <laughs> bear with me. This is really nice here. It's like, is this even working? Okay. Th this is like uh, if, if SNL were working on the set of Forrest Gump, but they only had a... Uh, uh, paint like, uh, like water paint and and um so they're doing with whatever they can so i guess that's what your student loan school hits to this okay okay <laughs> sorry i just had to roast you right now uh, so hey guys uh so I, i'm nelson um hey see you there um <laughs> so you, you might be able to tell like i have some kind of accent um some kind it, it's not very <laughs> thick uh but you know i was hanging out with this person i just met and she was like, where are you from? And this is hella high. Oh, that's better. And, and I was like, well, um, I'm originally from France. And she was like, oh my god, you're from France? I love Paris. And I was just, um, I'm not from Paris. Uh, but she didn't care. And she kept going. And she was like, I've seen the photos on Instagram of the, the Eiffel Tower with the cherry blossom trees. And I know cherry blossom trees are from Japan, but somehow they were in Paris. And I know it's real because I saw it on Instagram from my favorite uh, follower. So, um, so she was like very excited about Paris. She's like, oh my god, yeah, I love Paris. I've never been there, but I've seen it on Instagram. How cool is this? Uh, um, oh my god, have you seen the new Stars Born with, with Lady Gaga? She has this French song. I had no idea she knew how to write in French, but she's singing a song and it's called Love by En Rose. I was wondering, since you're French, could you sing it to me? Um, so, uh, I don't know what just happened to me, but I apparently opened a Pandora box to woman in America, and I was just like, uh, she's pretty cute, so... Quand elle me prend en ses bras Et qu'elle me prend tout bas are we hooking up yet? <laughs> <laughs> Made it to the first joke. Let's go. <laughs> so um, she was like, oh, my God, that was just so romantic. Like, French is such a beautiful language. Now, here comes the part where people studied French, and it goes like, I studied French for three years in college. I can't remember a thing, but... I remember something, <laughs> and then this, you know, they kind of get this floaty eyes, and I'm like, okay, she's going to say, and I'm like, so to the people that do not understand what it means, because um, it's actually not English, that was yogurt, it's not a language, that's, so the real thing is, voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir, and that's not an invite, and that means, do you, do you want to, do you want to sleep with me tonight? So, as a good human being, I just go full teacher, and I'm like, listen, so, the correct pronunciation is voulez-vous, and then she goes voilà beau, coucher, coucher avec moi, and then they're like 
all the wool and uh, this is where I give up and I'm like, yeah, sure, let's just go to your bedroom. Uh, it would be easier from, from that point. Uh, <laughs> you know. And this is one I'm not trying to hook up. When I, when, you know, I'm, you know, I try to hook up too. You know, it's real dif difficult as a French, I, exactly. You, I, right, you're like, he tries? I thought he already succeeded. Anyway, so when I go on dates, I try to not tell right away I'm French, because it's cheating, man, it's cheating. Once, it, once I'm in, I'm, dancing, okay. Once I say I'm French, it's over, game over. It's like, you know, I'm not trying to brag. I just did though, but. Um, <laughs> I can't say I'm French, it's too easy. So I gotta, you know, I, I so if a date goes poorly, I just, uh, and the lady's leaving, I'm like, oh, hey, I am French. And then they're kind of like, I have free healthcare. And they're like, oh, oh why didn't you say this from the start? I'm like, um, uh, okay, so then I'm just like out of things to say because I just sit it out. So I'm like, we don't have any right there. And they're like, um, I'm, I was gonna swear, but apparently you gotta keep it PG-13. So hey, this is Nelson, and I'm at D Disney Channel. D Disney? Yeah. Uh, I don't. I've. I never watched Mickey. I, don't, I didn't have cable in France. I was broke, so like, I just don't know what the Mickey head looks like. I just I guess it's a mouse. I don't. Fuck, I don't. Oh, you just got you got sad for me. Okay. Oh, well, got sad for myself when I was a kid too. It's been. It's really hard, you know, I had to leave for here because, you know, it's just too comfortable there. I just thought it'd be easier if I'm here with the gun violence and uh, having a HMO from Kaiser, which I don't know what that means. I just, I just have it through work. And just was, it's like, apparently I got to call a doctor to go see another doctor. It's like, I don't understand what is this, but fun stuff. I have a handicap, you know, it's, it's not like, no, French is a val, it's an add-on. But I have an actual disability. My arm is smaller, so like I can't go higher than this. Uh, but I can with this one. Um, so um, this is the part where you're supposed to be sad. Did I just control this audience by saying this? No, it's just <laughs> anyway. Um, that was not funny. Um, <laughs> let's be honest. Um, and you know, um, you know, I was in the Muni today, and people they just think I'm cute. Uh, um, and and. And they don't see that I actually have a disability. And you know, I'm sitting, you know, I came here, I took the M, and I'm sitting in the handicapped seat, and people just start judging me. And they're like, this fucker. He's like, yeah. oh, just, sorry. Just, I just said this funker. Right? Okay. I'm, I'm like, he's sitting into the old handicapped seat. He shouldn't be here. And like, I see those ladies, and they're judging me, and they're like, and they're like 18 or something. And I'm like, I'm more disabled than you, you know? And I'm just like, I have back pains, and no one believes me, and they're like, get out of here. And so I have, literally, I'm disabled, but I don't have a community, so I just don't know where I'm supposed to sit. So I'm, you guys tell me. And also, you know, so you, I don't know, maybe you guys being able to say like, oh, he has a disability and stuff, but there's people that, you know, they're like, once I met them, and, they, and you know, we get to it, it's like, okay, so I can't carry this shit, man, it's too heavy for me, so you gotta do it. And they're like, huh, what? Uh, they're like, oh, I'm sorry, man, you know? And they're like, I didn't even notice. And it's like, well, do you, you thought I was playing hide and seek with you? Like, it's like, do, do people say that to people in wheelchair? It's like, oh my God, I didn't see you were rolling. You know, I just assume you're just constantly sitting and you're more comfortable. It's like, oh, that explained your shoes. Like, I saw your soles. They're like brand new. It looks like you have a new pair of Yeezy every day. Like, you know, do, you know like it's expensive. It's like, I don't understand why people say this to me. Like, I'm not trying to hide my handicap. <laughs> I'm disabled. Did I say it yet? <laughs> um, oh, so in case if you guys don't know, I, I live in here in San Francisco. That was it for me, I guess. I don't have any jokes to close this. <laughs> Bye. That was great, but we're nowhere near figuring out who was the cod that microwaved that it's fish in the office. Yeah, and it still stinks. Yeah, I mean, then I guess the case is still open. I think it'll take about uh, seven weeks. Probably. Good. Seven's my lucky number. <laughs> so good. <laughs> the office. <laughs>